for our media day, and you know, we've been practicing since October 1st, and you know we've got a lot, a lot to learn. But I've seen a lot of growth in our team over the last two and a half, three weeks, and you know, a lot more to come. But the attitude's been great. I think our guys are improving, and their willingness to improve is, has been really uh, impressive. So, you know. Recognize we have one of the toughest schedules uh, in the entire country. So it's, uh, our resiliency will be tested. Uh, our, our ability will be tested, and that's a good thing. You know, I think history shows that uh, teams that put themselves in conversations for NCAA tournament bids, uh, the, the selection committee has rewarded you know teams to go out and challenge themselves. And they don't penalize teams when you go out and play somebody. So uh, that's exactly what. It, Kenny did for us coming in this year. So, any any questions? That's it. Thank you, <laughs> Coach. Are you are you surprised? I know you can't talk about specific players, but the success you've had in, in selling this program, getting guys to commit to the future here as quickly as it's happening for you. Uh, pleased, uh, not surprised. Uh, you know, part of. What, what our coaching staff tells recruits is we made that jump too. You know, we put our money where our mouth was. You know, we, we, we invested and we jumped in this program, you know, two feet in. And, and we want anybody that we recruit uh, to want to be a Cardinal. And not everyone wants to, you know, for a variety of reasons. But the kids that um, we've been recruiting in every single class, including the grad transfers that are on our team, felt good about becoming a Louisville Cardinal. So I wouldn't say surprised, um, excited and pleased and you know, really feel like for our assistant coaches who've worked incredibly long hours and built so many uh, lasting relationships that um, you know they, they've been rewarded and we've been rewarded. As far as the leadership styles that VJ and, and Kristen have exhibited, can you take us through how they are similar, how they are, are different? Well, I think those guys are respected by their teammates. They're everyday guys. Uh, and what I mean by that is they show up every day with the same type of attitude. You know, there's no highs and lows. Uh, they may not play well in a particular day or a particular drill, but it doesn't affect their, their mentality. It doesn't affect uh, how they take the floor, what type of teammate they are. And I think anytime you're being led or you have guys on your team, you want to look to guys that are stable that are going to be the same person every single day they step on the floor. And I think VJ and CC, you know, they earned that right. You know, players voted on it. It had nothing to do with the coaches because they saw their work up close and personal all year. And that doesn't mean that they're, they're, they're the only voices. It doesn't mean they're the only leaders um, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I think they'd be the first to tell you that. But I, I think that's why they became captains, uh, because their peers felt that way about them. What do you get from CC on the floor and how – how is his translation from, from where he was to here been? Well, it's a jump up. You know, the, uh, the ability level, the size, both on the guys that are guarding him and um, the guys that he sees in the lane are bigger. But I think CC plays the game uh, for his teammates. You know, he tries to create shots. He understands when uh, Jordan has hit two threes in a row. He's looking for him. And it's just, it's just sort of the, um, it's just the way of a, a true point guard, a guy that's getting everybody involved and has a real a feel for the climate of the game and what's happening, you know, who's down. He has a way to keep, you know, guys up, keep guys confident, find guys that are confident. Um, and again, it's it's a challenge for him because this level is is extremely difficult, athletic, more athletic than he's used to, longer than he's used to. But he's out there trying to make the right play on both ends of the floor every time we step you know, onto the practice court. Does he have the highest basketball IQ on your team? And, and who else would join him in that kind of category? I don't know about that. Um, you know, I, I think Dwayne Sutton has a really good IQ for the game. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of guys on our team that um, you know, have a good feel. I think I'd probably say that because he's, he's in the lead guard position. He's in the point guard position. But um, he does have a great feel for the game. But I, I wouldn't say that he sticks out uh, extraordinarily with the other guys on the team. What's been the biggest challenge trying to get all these guys to not just 
play together, but really just, just try to know each other? Well, I think that happens uh, away from here. Uh, getting to know each other, um, that's just, you spend time. It's just it's relationships that, that you build over time. and uh, They've all been very good with their time. I, I don't feel like this team has clicks. You know, it's like two guys aren't walking into the, onto the practice court, uh, the same two every day. Uh, I've been around teams like that. Uh, but, um, you know, I think our, our, our team, uh, the, the togetherness, just the biggest challenge is, is daily habits. You know, making sure that every day they come to the practice court, like they're ready to go. And some of our freshmen that are now sophomores, they struggle at times with consistency uh, in their habits. But we're getting better. I think that's been the, uh, the thing that, that we're looking to as a coaching staff is to make sure they're the same guy every single day. What's your offensive philosophy with, with four out, one, one true post? How does that fit this team? Well, we lost a lot of size off last year's team. You know, you had Honest, you had Ray, uh, even Dang was, you know, a bigger guy that if, if I were coaching uh, him this year, I'd play him at the four. You know, I just think it, it makes you a lot more difficult to guard when you're on the offensive end. And uh, on the defensive end, it'll present some challenges at times, but, uh, you know, we're going to have to keep the ball in front of us a lot more than maybe teams of the past because we don't have the erasers behind us behind the perimeter players that maybe, you know, past Louisville teams had. You don't have Ray back, you know, back there blocking shots and Honest back there blocking shots. If you want to put Steven and Malik in foul trouble, you have to just keep getting beat off the dribble. So we, we have to be able to keep the ball in front of us. Uh, and that's probably more important for this year's team than maybe years of the past. But uh, I think it's more challenging to guard when you have a guy that, that plays like a perimeter player, like a guard at the four, because um, not every team plays that way. Some teams are going to have that 6'9", 6'10", kid that maybe played center in high school was playing a power forward. And unless they're zoning, he's going to have to be out on the floor at times. It gives the, the five-man for us more room to operate as well. You know, if Steven have, is having his way, um, you know, at times with guys in the post, um, there's not a, um, a fellow post player four feet from him. So, you know, we're going to try to space the floor, make it harder for teams to double, to collapse. When we're doing our job inside, what does Steven do well? I mean, we've seen him just a little bit this <clears throat> scrimmage last year, maybe. Uh, plays hard, extremely competitive. It's been my experience sometimes that, that big guys are late to the game. Your big guys don't love the game. You know, perimeter players, you know, Darius and Ryan, who spoke at the. Um, at the luncheon, talked about how they, when they were little kids playing ball. Sometimes big guys don't play. I mean, Steven didn't play until he was well into high school. And, you know, so I think sometimes they get labeled as, hey, they're not as competitive. You know, it doesn't mean as much. That's a 180 from Steve. And it means a lot to him. He's very competitive. He's a tough kid. Um, you know, he, he can do a little bit of everything. You got to keep him out of foul trouble. You know, he's got to be able to tame that aggressiveness. Uh, but he's um, he's going to have to be a factor for us to be a good team. Have you ever changed anything about how you teach players? You know, your particular philosophy for offense and defense, or has it been been pretty easy with the score? I don't think it's ever easy, even when you have experienced teams. Um, I just think a good good coach or a good coaching staff gives the players whatever they need to be successful. If you got to watch film with a guy, if you have to uh, get him on the floor before practice uh, with maybe a scout team, um, you know, if he needs more live reps in, in real competition, you know, everybody learns differently. You know, every, everybody learns differently, you know, outside of basketball and on the court. So trying to figure out, you know, which ways are effective for which guys is, is a big part of our jobs as coaches. But um, I don't think it. I don't think it's it's ever easy. You're always trying to sort of chase perfection and get guys, you know, playing at their their best. So I mean, what's that process been like? With, you know, especially with defense. Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, I, I enjoy going to the practice court uh, because I have willing, you know, listeners. I have guys that uh, want to be coached. Um, I think nothing bothers a coach more 
and when he has guys that are that are sort of deemed uncoachable, you know, have all the answers, you know, the, the slight eye roll, the, um, you know, they don't they they don't put into practice, you know, what you took five minutes to explain, and uh, I, I don't see that. I see guys making mistakes, but their willingness to try to correct them and get better. Uh, I'd like our team to hold each other accountable a little bit more. Sometimes I think we're, we're too friendly to one another, but um, you know, I think. Biggest challenge is we're just teaching them something completely new that um, you know wasn't a part of their world a year ago. Was there a point in time where you kind of saw things click in terms of team chemistry where you said, okay, I think these guys have, have been getting to know each other enough on and off the floor where they trust each other? Well, I don't think that I don't think Danielle that that ever arrives. Like, okay, we're good. You know, what happens if we get our heads handed to us against Nickel State by 13, and you know everybody's booing? Are we good then? You know, is chemistry okay? Everybody good? Everybody feel good about each other? Um, so it, it's it's a daily thing. I think our guys like one another, but to be able to go through the fire with each other and and, um, and improve, um, you know, keep team above self, all that stuff is really yet to be tested. You know, everybody's patting us on the back and uh, so glad that you're here, coach, and, and all that stuff. I think you know we'll find ourselves through adversity, and it's coming. It's coming. Chris, Ron talked last year about, a lot about being more than just a shooter, which kind of obviously he was labeled as for a long time. How good of a shooter, first of all, is he, and has he become a better all-around basketball player? He's really good. He's a really good shooter. Um, you know, Ryan's, um, you know, size um, is, is a hindrance. I mean, if he was six seven, he can get a shot off on you know, anybody, but he's not. And so he's got to be able to, to, to get open. He's got to find ways to get open. We have to free him uh, as a coaching staff and, you know, get him in positions where defenders are running at him and not latched onto him. And um, that's a challenge. I mean, it's just they know who he is as a player. But he has worked hard uh, to, be, to be more than just a shooter. You know, it doesn't mean he's going to turn into, uh, you know, Russell Westbrook. But, you know, he's got to be able to get a guy in the air, draw a foul use his shooting ability to have the defense fly at him so that he can you know, dump it down underneath. And he's got to become a much better defender and use his IQ and uh, his craftiness to be in the right position at the right time. So uh, I think he recognizes that. I think he's self-aware enough as a player to know what he's got to get better at. And uh, you know, I can't say that I've seen improvements. I didn't coach him last year. But I do think he's a very, very talented offensive player. With the graduates, um, what, what was the common reaction you got from them in terms of trying to bring them into the program, their, their enthusiasm or their curiosity? Yeah, I mean, each one of them was, each of the grad transfers, you know, had a unique story. Um, you know, Kristen was the first. And, you know, here's a guy that grew up, grew up in our state um, that had a brother that was a student manager at Louisville, so he, he knew what um, you know, Cardinal fans were all about. And, this program stood for. So I think for him, I think he had a real, real desire, you know, to be a part of it. And he joined us early. And, you know, um, I think Akoy, quite honestly, didn't have a whole lot of options because I don't think a lot of schools knew he was going to be available as a six-year player. And he had a fondness about this place and the times that he had uh, in his first year and a half. And he'd been through so much, um, you know, injury-wise and just experience experiences wise and you know we had familiarity with one another because I recruited him a little bit coming out of high school and he was in the same league as us at, when we were at Xavier uh, so you know our compliance staff worked really hard uh, to get that immediate eligibility in his sixth year and then Quan was a guy quite honestly that, that, that committed elsewhere first you know from Richmond and um, you know you probably have to ask him why, why things didn't work out at the University of Tennessee but um, you know, we were very, very fortunate. You know, he's undersized, but he's extremely athletic. Um, he's a phenomenal kid. Do anything you ask of him. If I told him to guard the center, he, he tries best. He's just, uh, you know, he's a guy that everybody gets along with. And I think you need that when you have grad transfers. Um, you, you need guys uh, that can provide stability, that can assimilate themselves into a team pretty se seamlessly. And, those three guys have really good personalities and mesh well with our team. I mean, I know it's a, a matter of trying to fill roster spots you know, and taking over program, but with, when you think back, 
was there a certain type of guy you were looking for? Was it just somebody you know who was just eager about trying to join? Yeah, I want, wanted somebody that you know wanted to be part of um, of Louisville basketball <coughs> and do something special <coughs> in their final year. And um, you know, again, we took the job at the end of March, early April. Um, you know, we had a lot to overcome. And you know, a lot of those kids that we were looking at were in decision making mode within the first couple of weeks. Um, so. You know, it wasn't it wasn't easy. Uh, we were very fortunate to get the, the three guys that, that we got, and we felt like we needed um, you know help on the perimeter. You know, you lost Quentin, who was you know a four-year starter or at least close to it, a guy that had the ball in his hands a fair amount, um, and so we felt like we needed uh, help on the perimeter. Um, you know, to relieve Darius and, and Ryan of, of all the ball handling responsibilities, and we feel like we got that with CC and Quan. Uh, on the perimeter. Coach, how much have you followed the court proceedings in New York City the last couple weeks and just any reaction to any of the state of college basketball stuff that's been tossed around? I mean, it's all over my Twitter account, you know, so um, I try not to get immersed in it because, you know, all that stuff happened when, when I was at a different place. But uh, I'd be lying if I said I, I wasn't following it, but pins and needles, you know, every word. Are you worried that, that there might be more NCAA sanctions? How do you address that with recruits and stuff that they bring that up? The only thing I'm worried about is making sure that, that, that we're ready to go in, in the regular season opener. You know, and, um, you know, there, there's a lot of unknowns. People love to speculate. It's 2018. Everybody has an opinion. You know, as soon as something comes out, it's like, you know, he's got an opinion. And then, no, that, that opinion's wrong. And so, like, everybody wants to speculate on what's going to happen. We're going to let the thing play out, um, you know, as the NCAA is going to as well, and then uh, then maybe we'll get to worrying about it. But I have zero concern right now. That stuff. Speaking of speculation, uh, the G League stuff with the hundred twenty-five thousand dollar contract. Do you think that's going to affect how you recruit the next class? Um, we're going to try to recruit the best fits to Louisville. You know, regardless of what rules are in place, guys can go straight to the NBA. They can go straight to the G League. Academic requirements get you know, more stringent. Uh, none of that's going to change our mindset. You know, this is a special place. Uh, it's got the best arena in the country. It's got one of the most passionate fan bases uh, in the country. I think we're in the less, best league in the country. So there, there's a lot of really good stuff that if you're a high school prospect, um, you're going to find time to figure out how to come visit the University of Louisville. Whether it was CC or, or a high school recruit that we can't mention just yet, but it, how important was it to get that first commitment, that first person to say, all right, I'm buying into what these guys are selling? It helped. You know, it helped. It's, um, it's like when you're an adult, you know, and you go to a pool party, and everybody sits around a pool, stands around a pool, and then there's that one crazy dude that just says, you know what, watch this, and jumps on in. and. Uh, you know, he says the water temperature's fine. And I think, you know, for us, we, we needed guys like that. And CC represented, you know what, I want to be a part of Cardinal basketball. And, um, you know, it's, it's obviously happened in the 2019 class. And, you know, hopefully that will continue to, um, you know, domino effect with, with future classes. How good can Jordan be in your system style? And what, what does he bring to this team with the way he can score the basketball? Jordan... Um, is a talent. He um, he has <laughs> never valued the details. You know, he just sort of you know those things you see at parties, like you know, the, you know I don't know what those those things are called, or like grand openings. You know, that's how he sort of runs up and down the floor and sometimes gets in the stance. So we get him to value getting in a stance, being ready to shoot the ball, being able to play off of a bad closeout. Um, because you need to at this level. He could get away with that um, in high school. He'd get away with that in, in elite AAU action. But to be, a, to be a great player at the <clears throat> ACC level, hell, Big East level, Big Ten level, high major college basketball, you have to, I think, value the details. You have to be a little bit more locked in and a little bit crisper in everything that you do. And I can freely say that because I've had a lot of conversations in film with Jordan, 
And I think he understands that. But understanding and growing those into habits are two different things. But he's working really hard. You know, I, I used to, if you said, if you, if you had an opportunity to talk to Jordan later on today and you say, Coach Max says on offense he doesn't want you to be, if he doesn't say the word casual, I'll give you $10, Jody. <laughs> And what about Darius? Darius has to be the same guy every day he steps on the floor. You know, he, um, he's very hard on himself. He, he puts a lot of time into the, into the game, away from practice, away from the coaches. He's in here every single night working on his game. But, you know, that's great. And your teammates, I'm sure, really appreciate how invested you are and, and how, how good you want to be as a player. But they got to know that guy to the right of them is the same guy every single day. And that's been a, that was a challenge for Darius over the summer. <clears throat> and it was good to hear him at the luncheon talking about playing with pace, landing on two feet in the lane. I said, very rarely can you find a guy that in the half-court setting on offense drives the ball in the lane, jumps off one foot, and good things happen consistently. And so he's, um, he's growing. He's getting better. He's one of our most talented players for sure. Do you see him possibly winning a starting role in the backcourt alongside CC? It really doesn't matter what I say. The, the players decide who starts. That's 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 not Coach Mack. Their performance, um, their attitudes. Does he have the ability to? Sure, but um, they, they they decide who starts by their play, and that you know that doesn't get decided on October nineteenth. That'll get decided up until um, Bellarmine, and then guess what? It gets decided. Against Simmons, and then it gets decided against Nichols. Like, you don't cement at least when you play uh, for our staff. Like, hey, I'm the starter, and um, I just think competition, you know, fuels the best out of everybody, and sometimes the worst out of some people that you can't count on. So um, it'd be interesting. I think Darius is a competitor, and I do think he's getting a lot better. He certainly does have the ability to be a starter, but that's up to him. Can you, for the red white scrimmage, I mean, obviously you want to see what they you're coaching them, but attitude wise, what do you want to see from your team on Sunday afternoon? I want them to be the same team that we talk about uh, and that we work on in practice every single day. You know, just because fans are in the stands now and you know people are cheering doesn't mean that uh, that manifests itself in bad shots, in bad decisions, in not being in the right place defensively. Um, I just want to see the same team, the same team. You have to be the same player, the same team, every single time that you step on the floor so that your teammate knows who the heck he's playing with and your coaching staff know, knows who, who they're coaching. Uh, that's, that's what I'm really looking forward to uh, on the red-white because there's going to be some um, guys who maybe go outside of that. And, and that's okay. It's part of growth, but that's what I'm looking for.